Alex, earlier in the show, we played some video from Liz Cheney, the former congresswoman, who said that her uh, ex-GOP colleagues in the House wanted her to lie about Donald Trump. What more have you guys learned about that? Absolutely. Speaking at her alma mater of Colorado College, she went and encouraged, uh, it basically said that Republican leaders, um, as you said, wanted her to lie in order to keep her position as the number three in the conference. Essentially, she was saying that she faced the choice of telling the truth about January 6th and Donald Trump and the insurrection at the Capitol or keeping her power. And that she, that in that clear decision, she chose one one way or the other. Interestingly enough, though, while she was at that speech, about half the college crowd still turned their backs on her, not because of her position on January 6th or making that you know, brave political decision, but because of her past record on some other Republican issue, showing that even if you make that one stand still the, in this polarized country, people, people still had diverging opinions. Well, yeah, that's a really, really good point. And this high profile speech comes amid some speculation as to what Liz Cheney might do next. Alex, what's the latest? There, there certainly had been some chatter that she might throw her hat in the ring and run for president. There hasn't been any moves towards that just yet. What do we think she's up to? I mean, more than just chatter, she spent a few hundred thousand dollars putting ads on the airwaves in New Hampshire, uh, which is if there's any state where you'd have sort of one of the quote unquote never Trump Republicans really trying to make it make an entry, it would probably be in New Hampshire, which has that sort of maverick reputation. Um, I think you're going to see her pack, uh, which again was what which was the funding mechanism for those ads. Uh, they are still planning to spend competitively in that state ahead of the primary. Now, whether or not Liz Cheney is the candidate, I still think is an open question. You know, Republicans. Uh, Republican polling shows she is not the most popular member of her own party now. Uh, I think it's more likely than not you'll see her pack throw their weight behind a different sort of candidate. Uh, if I already guessed, this is pure speculation, but I guess someone like Chris Christie, who's uh, expected to join the race and make New Hampshire a focal point, would be much more likely. Yeah, it's not quite clear what Cheney's lane would be. Mike Pence also, were he to jump in the race, the same issues where he made a decision about January 6th that so many Republicans oppose. And we should note, Ron DeSantis makes his debut on the campaign trail today in Iowa, his first time as a declared candidate. But Alex, we want to close with an important new piece of reporting that you guys have at Axios about preserving the stories of the last Holocaust survivors. Please tell us about it. Yes, absolutely. Essentially, we are now in the last generation of people who survived the Holocaust, and you're seeing museums and other and other groups basically go out of their way to memorialize them and make sure that you know the memories uh, of those horrific events are not lost to history. Yeah, certainly. So very, very important now more than ever, particularly as we see a rise of anti-Semitism and hate across much of the globe. National political correspondent for Axios, Alex Thompson, thank you so much for being with us this morning.